Tiferet Israel says the clear and the dirty water become mixed inside the sponge. So when they're released, they're all contaminated. Such is with a student who doesn't know how to discriminate in his learning and does not classify his knowledge. His ideas will be randomly blended and he will certainly be unable to express himself clearly to others. This is when a person starts learning in such a way where he doesn't know what's good, what's bad, what's alakha, what's opinion, what's this. He doesn't know. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of this with, uh, with uh, certain institutions. Let's just call it certain institutions in the world today, the religious world today. They teach their uh, graduating rabbis to teach Torah in, in my opinion, my opinion, for whatever three cents that it's worth, is completely weakening. This is, not only it's not chizuk, it's weakening. Weakening Torah. Why? They give you when they teach a source sheet. A source sheet. So they give they say, oh, there's a lecture on Shabbat. Is a source sheet on a website. Everybody print it, or you can get it at the shul. And it's the mainstream shuls. Mainstream shuls. Get the source sheet, and they give you whatever drasha that the rabbi is going to give you. He's going to give you a 50-page source sheet of what he's going to say for an hour. It's 50 pages. And he's going to briefly go through a bunch of different opinions. Uh, rabbi said this, Rabbi said this, Rabbi said this, Rabbi said this. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Any, no, 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 no. Okay, so what's the talk? What's the bottom line? What's yes? Do I, am I allowed? Not allowed? Oh, you make your own mind. This is weakening Torah. This is weakening Torah. Why? Because the average person whether he's wearing a kippah from the day he was born or he just put it on for the Knesset, does not know how to make a decision on his own. That's appropriate. Why? He doesn't have da'at Torah. He doesn't have da'at Torah. If he has da'at Torah, he's not listening to Yeshu. He's learning. He's not sitting in your lecture with your 80 source sheets. He's getting his own source sheets. So you're giving... 50 opinions to the average folk that most of the time the only Torah they learn the whole week is this shiur and maybe 5-10 minutes between Mincha and Arvit every day. That's the whole Torah for the whole week. And you're going to tell them his 50 opinions of different rabbis that said yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you don't tell them what's the bottom line, yes or no. Oh, you can make up your own mind. This is weakening. Why? I'll tell you a few reasons. Number one, if it's a secular person, like I was most of my life, to me, if you give me two opinions, to me that means I can do whatever I want. I don't know what it means, I don't know what it means, both this and this are the words of the living God. I don't know what that means. I don't know that what it means that Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel are both right even though they're on two different sides. I don't know what that means. To me, as a secular person, neither one of them what they're talking about, I'll make up my own mind. He says no. He says yes. Okay, I'll say maybe. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. That's a dik. Sometimes I agree with him. Sometimes I agree with him. Look, I love everybody. I'm the next Rabbi uh, something. I'm Rabbi Yaron. No, I'm starting a new Hasidut, guys. Who's joining? Who's joining? No, I'm agreeing with everyone. I love everyone. So a secular person, it says, wait a minute, when there's two minds, there's yes or no, oh, I'm going to take everybody. But then that means they missed. They missed something. Why? The Gemara in Maseret Rosh Hashanah, page 14, says, someone who takes the leniencies, the leniencies of Bet Shammai, and the leniencies of Bet Hillel, Rasha, wicked. Meaning, whenever a Bet Shammai says yes, he goes. Whenever Bet Hillel says yes, he goes. Whenever they say no, he goes with the other one. He only looks for leniencies. Rasha, wicked. Why? He's not looking for the truth. What about someone wants to be Mahmir? Someone wants to, I want to do all the worst stuff. I want to do the stuff that's most difficult. I want to be Moshe Rabbeinu. Someone, the Gemara says, that takes the stringencies of Bet Shammai and the stringencies of Bet Hillel. You think, what does it say, tzaddik? 
No. It says, this is a fool that walks blind in the night. Fool that walks blind in the night. Why? It's not about yes or no. It's not about difficult or easy. It's about what's the truth. What did you toil and toil and toil and work and work and work and work to do to arrive at the actual truth that your neshama understands? Now, since we're not Bet Shammai and we're not Bet Hillel, we have a rabbi. You have to have multiple rabbis. You have a posek that you have to hold by. If you're Sephardi, most Sephardis hold by Rabbi Vadya. If not, whatever, whoever your posek is, that's your posek. That's who you go by Allah. But then you have to have your local rabbi. And then you, whoever with Bikneset you go to, that hopefully has at least 10 people that actually keep Shabbat. That's another rabbi. It's a local rabbi, basic day to day questions. And then you have your rabbi, that's your Mechazek, that's your guy, that's your, that's the, uh, that's your Rebbe. That's the one that, you have, that really knows you. That knows if you're honest to your wife or not. That knows if you really have money, you just look like you do. That knows if you cheat, if you don't. That knows all the stuff about you. The one that you ask all the questions, including the uncomfortable ones. The one that's going to pick you up when you're a little mattress on the floor. You need chizuk. So a person needs to have that. But if he's just looking for Rabbi Noach, he's looking for the, for the rabbi that's the most comfortable for him, because Noach also means comfortable. Whatever is comfortable and going with him, that's a rasha. That's a wicked person. That's a wicked person. So a person that teaches the public every opinion yes no maybe yes no maybe yes no maybe is doing damage to the community why because the average person does not know Torah. in fact unfortunately the statistics haven't changed much they've deteriorated over time in america and the world especially america where at this point 90 percent of american jews do not even keep shabbat do not keep Shabbat, the very basic mitzvah of Judaism, to such an extent that, Allah, that uh, the Rambam in Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 30, last halacha, says a Jew that violates Shabbat by driving on Shabbat, smoking cigarettes on Shabbat, watching TV on Shabbat, uh, grinding on Shabbat, all of these different things. A Jew that's a Mechalel Shabbat is considered in the eyes of Hashem and His Torah 100% an idolater. An idol worshiper, no different than a Christian missionary. What if, what if the TV was open before Shabbat? It's different. It's still the Rabbanan. That, that's Chilul Shabbat when it's to, uh, as far as the uh, Kvot Shabbat. Let's say I won't Kvot be, Shabbat. I won't but if he's doing it Lechatchila, it's no, it's a problem. If it's, if it's on, he didn't know it was on, it's on, then he has a different problem. Why does he have a TV in his house? It's a different problem. But it's no, not I considered Chilul Shabbat. I on the street, I see no, that's not Shabbat. That's not, that's not Chilul Shabbat. No. Chilul Shabbat is when you're actively, you're turning on the TV, you're turning on the car, you're pressing on the ignition, you. That's Chilul Shabbat b'faresia. When 10 people know that you are violating Shabbat, they don't need to see you. They know that Johnny smokes on Shabbat. They don't need to see you. People think that b'faresia, public sin of Shabbat, means that 10 Jews saw you. No. If you look at the Gemara, Masechet Avodah Zarah, it specifically uses the story of Pinchas. To teach us what does Faresia mean? What does a public sin mean? A public sin means when 10 Jews know that you are sinning. 10 Jews knew that Zimri was with the Goya Cosby. They didn't see him. They were in the oil. They were, what do you think it was? A, uh, everybody was inside his oil. No, 10 people knew. They both went in there and they're doing whatever they're doing in there. 10 people knew. Pinchas says that gives me the, the, the right to kill them. Because that's the dean of a zealous person that sees a, uh, a Jew and a non-Jew in the middle of the act. If they're zealous, they're allowed to kill them. We don't have that dean anymore because we don't have zealous people anymore in the world. But the point is, what we learned, Parashat Pinchas, is that. Now, Faresia means when ten Jews know that you drive on Shabbat. They don't need to see you drive. They don't need to see you smoke. So... A person that violates Shabbat 
is not going to know what does it mean 50 opinions. The rabbi tells him, listen, there's yes, there's no, there's Rambam, there's Tosfot, there's this, there's that, there's 50 opinions. What's the Mechalel Shabbat going to say? Oh, no one knows like me. Maybe I'm a bigger tzaddik than them. I think I'm nice. I paid for the synagogue. I paid for the Sefer Torah. You know how much money I donated? You know how much money I did? You know how good I am? You know how nice I am to them? I buy sandwiches from them. I bought, uh, I bought the guy don't. Like, people magnify their uh, day-to-day life as if they're Moshe Rabbeinu. So the guy that doesn't know right or left, he drives on Shabbat still, and the rabbi never told him anything. He's like, oh, if the rabbi never told me anything, that means it's okay for me to drive on Shabbat. Because there's yes and no. So I'm, I'm choosing on he yes, and on the other one no. Driving, yes. Parking, no. I'll give it to the valet. That's a Beknesset in, 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 in Beverly Hills. Is, they call themselves Orthodox Beknesset. Orthodox Beknesset in Beverly Hills. They have valet parking on Shabbat. But they call themselves Orthodox. I don't know why. Why bother? Why bother, why bother call yourself Orthodox? Just don't call yourself anything. Call yourself reform. Call, don't call yourself. Why, what, why bother? Why, why lie to yourself? I don't understand that. But this is not the fault of the people. It's not completely their fault. It's the 50 sources. It's the flawed teachings that are disconnected from the people by telling them, you can make up your own mind. It's all subjective. It's all subjective, what you think, what you don't think. Do what's right in your heart. Bilam thought what's right in his heart was to kill Am Yisrael. Does that mean it's right? Hitler, Imach Shimon, thought to kill Am Yisrael is right in his heart. What does this mean? Right? Who said this is Christianity? So the first flaw of the teaching style of providing multiple sources without an actual yes or no, what we do to the average person, it kills them. It weakens them. It weakens them. For the slightly above average, the one that's trying, the one that's trying to get stronger, but he's not quite there. He doesn't have that toy yet. He's like a new Baal Tshuva. It's two, three, four, five years into it. He's not learning every day. He's not in a cold level, but he learns a little bit. He goes to Shior. He learns a little bit from the books here and there. He's new. You give him a Shior with 50 sources, you've ruined all of his learning. Why? Because now he thinks that he's supposed to, in order for him to ever arrive at an actual opinion, he has to know all the sources. And even if he goes to all the sources, what makes it right? Maybe it's wrong. So maybe sometimes I'll do it, and maybe sometimes I won't do it. And uh, Rav Slovedzik said over here this one, and uh, the rabbi uh, said over here this one, and uh, this one said this one, and, 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 and again, he, you've mixed him up. Not that different from the secular person. Not that different from the secular person. It's, it's just one step removed. You've confused him to now, he is now a kofer, a kofer, but he doesn't know it though. He thinks he's good. Why? He says, no, no. The rabbi said there's 50 opinions. I just picked that one. Like he thinks it's like a shopping list. He doesn't know that you're not allowed to do such things. So that's another problem. Now the one that actually knows Torah, that can discern and learn with you all of the opinions and understand that all of them are words of the living God, nine out of ten times, if not 9.9 out of 10 times, he's not in your shoe. He's not attending. He's not attending. And if he's attending, you didn't give him any chidushim anyway. Why? He has that Torah. So who are you making this shoe for? You have a thousand people. I remember we were in BRS. Every week they gave these 50-page source sheets. It's a thousand people, 600 people, 800 people in the crowd. People learn it, and you know, I'm sitting there, you know, I didn't go to many shiurim, I'm just in the beginning, I'm just trying to see what's, what's going on in the place, and sometimes I'll come to tefillah a little early, so you don't have nothing to do, so you sit there, and you hear the guy finishing his speech, and you start overhearing people talk, and one guy would say, oh, so what do you think? He goes, oh, you know, I just sit here, pretend like I know what he's talking about. <laughs> like, the people are talking to each other, and they're religious. So, so what do you think? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm pretending like I know what he's talking about. I just keep nodding. He goes, yeah, me too. <laughs> and they give each other a high five. So this is not my opinion. I see this from the people. I was there. No one knows what's going on. 
the shiur ruined a thousand people's Dval Torah for the Shabbat. A thousand people, instead of getting an hour of Torah, where they got an hour of confusion. The rest of the week is ruined. So when a person does not, when he not only is a sponge himself, but his speech is like a sponge, where he gives them everything, all the good, all the bad, all the this, and doesn't tell them yes or no, you are doing a disservice to the people. You're doing a disservice to the people, please stop. You're ruining it. Now, last point, statistically. Statistically. You could say, okay, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. It's your opinion, all this stuff is your opinion. I have students that are do, 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 do. I have students that are benefiting from it. I have students that like it. Okay, so let's see. Your style of teaching people everything has been utilized by YU and the likes for a while now. A while. They didn't just open last year when I became religious. They, they've been around for a while, I'd say, right? Let's see the Jewish, the Jewishness of the Jewish people throughout that time. Has it improved? No. It's deteriorated. It's deteriorated to such an extent that many of the Gdole Adol are saying that the modern Orthodox today are what the conservative used to be 50 years ago. Conservative that are now Reform used to be like the modern Orthodox today. I spoke to one of the Gdole Adol in America and he told me, modern Orthodox is a different religion. I'm like, what do you mean? It's Judaism. He goes, no, no, they call themselves modern Orthodox. They call themselves Judaism. It's a different religion, modern Orthodox. I'm like, why don't you say something? He goes, it's to no toilet. It won't help. They have their own chachamim. They listen to their 50 opinions. They don't want to listen to one opinion. They want to listen yes or no. They want to, everything is subjective. Everything is, what do you think? What is this thing? What is this? We use, we like, we cherry pick the, 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 the rabbis and the opinions like Skittles. Oh, no, I like red. Okay, give me all the reds. Oh, I like green. Give me all the greens. This rabotai... This is, is, is a bizayon of the Torah. It's disrespect of the Torah. This is a disrespect of the Torah. And it's causing a lot of confusion. People are simple. People are simple. People are simple. People need to know yes or no. They don't need to know pilpulim. How you got to it. And who said this one. And who said that one. The reason why I mentioned sources is just so you know I didn't say it. Don't blame me for writing the Torah. That's why I mentioned sources to you. I don't necessarily expect every one of you to uh, write down the page number and go there. Maybe you will. But if you will, you'll find it. But it's not, I'm not telling you it because I think that you're going to write every single word that I say down. The point is to show you that there is a source. But at the end, what we try to do is say yes or no. Even though more times than not, there is an opposite opinion. There, many times there is a yes for every no and there's a no for every yes. Many times, not all the time. Many times there's an opposite opinion. But that's not what we go by. Why? We have a direction. What's our emit that we arrived? That's the emit, that's what we go by. Yeah, but there's another opinion. Good for him. Good for him for his opinion. We don't go by his opinion. We go by this opinion. Yeah, but uh, Rabbi, he's also big. Good. Chazaku Baruch. He's in Gan Eden. I'm trying to get there. He's in Gan Eden. Good for him. He has, I'm, I'm, I'm not there. I'm trying to get there. Okay, so why don't you do what he says? Because I don't go by him. I don't go by Rabbi such and such. I go by Rabbi Vadya. I go by Rabbi Yashi. I go by whoever, there is, whoever your posek is, you go by him, you stick to him. You can't pick and choose rabbis like you do uh, sandwiches. Unless your own rabbi says you can go with the other. Sometimes you'll see in al that the rabbi says, this is yes. And anyone that says no, there are enough chachamim, there are an opinion that says no, and you can go by that too. You have something to rely on. Meaning that you're allowed to go with the no, because your own rabbi said, even though I've, got, I've arrived at the truth, my truth is yes, I'm not saying that the no is wrong. There is enough wisdom that the other Chachamim arrived, that even they have their right. So you can go with either one. He's telling you, I'm doing yes. But they said, no, you, if, you, if you choose to do no, you're okay. You have something to rely on. Your own Chacham said you have something to rely on. But if he says, 
I say yes, and whoever says no is wrong, you are forbidden to go to a different opinion. You're forbidden. This is why it's Mamash Bushav Echerpa for all of these Sephardic Jews that want to rely on Ashkenazi poskim to wear wigs. Because they, the Sephardics, for the most part, rely on Ravavadya. Now, Ravavadya said it doesn't matter if it comes from Genom or it comes from India. Wigs are forbidden. And he provided Mamash a list of over 100 different poskim throughout, generation, throughout the generations that are f- it's forbidden to wear a wig just because of modesty. Forget Abu Dazara. It's not allowed to wear a wig for a Jewish woman, according to Rav Vadya, according to the Vilna Gaon, according to Rav Yashiv, and so on and so forth. The list goes on all the way to the days of the Gemara. He says you're not allowed. So for a Sephardic Jew to say, no, no, but this uh, uh, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein or the Rebbe Lubavitch, your Rebbe said, yes, yes, but you don't hold by them. You cannot go to them when it's convenient to you. That makes you rasha. So a Sephardic person can never do such a thing. But unfortunately, many of the local rabbis don't tell them that. Why? Because the local rabbi's wife also wears a wig. So he's nagua. He's biased. You allowed to wear a wig? No, absolutely not. Somebody tell Rabbi Vadia, but your daughter wears a wig. You yes, and my daughter gonna have gonna get on me also. Wear? Yes, so exactly. Rabbi Rabbi Vadia said when they told him, yeah, but your daughter wears a wig. He said yes. There's place in Gainom for her too. There's place in Gainom for her too. The point is, the truth is the truth. You cannot avoid the truth just because it's not convenient for you. So now, a person that teaches the public needs to take all of these things to consideration. You cannot just tell people you can decide for yourself. They don't know what the Torah is. The average person needs to know, am I allowed or am I not allowed? Yes or no? Many times my rabbi tells me, yes, but no, I'm like, no, I need to know, yes or no? He goes, but it's not so easy, yes or no. no. I said, for me, I'm a cow. I need yes or no, right or left. That's it. That's all I, I need yes or no. And this specific, the certain things, I want to know. Do, 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 all, all the uh, complications, right, left, do the certain things. I want to know. But certain things, I, listen, I don't care enough about it to investigate because I'm too busy investigating 70,000 other things. So just tell me what's right. I want to go to Gan Eden. Tell me what's right. What do you do? What do you do? Do you do, do it? Do you wear a wig? No. Okay, I'm not wearing a wig. What do you do? You eat, you eat uh, Bet Yourself? Yes. Okay, I eat Bet Yourself then. You eat, uh, okay, what do you do? That's what you have to ask. What do you do? Yes or no, what do you do? Are you, would you eat it? No. Okay, so I'm not eating it too. Why not? Because you're my Rebbe. If you go to Gary Noma, I want to be with you. I want to, well, I have to ask somebody some questions. What do you mean? Who am going to ask questions? What do you think, if we go to Gan Eden? You think he's going to look at me if we go to Gan Eden? He's, uh, what, Moshe Rabbeinu. Only have a chance if we go to gain home together. <laughs> so now, Rabotai, this is the key. This is the key you need to know. It's sponge, sponge. It's good, but it's terrible. Why? You have a talent that Hashem gave you to absorb a lot of information. But you're absorbing too much. You're absorbing too much. This is like a person that wants to live religious life and secular life at the same time.